Hey guys, well I'm finally back from my vacation. It was wonderful. I did pretty much nothing the whole time and I gotta say I'm quite excited to be home and back at my shop. Um, I was a little bit freaked out and paranoid that while I was gone someone was gonna just come and ransack my shop and steal all my tools, but that didn't happen, thank God. Um, I wasn't too worried because I had a friend that was using the shop off and on while I was gone. Um, so my only concern is, did he leave my shop as clean or hopefully cleaner than when he found it? Because you know that's just good shop etiquette. If you ever use another person's shop, you always leave it just as you found it or even better. That's just the rule. If you want to be able to use other people's shops, you clean up after yourself and do a little bit extra. So let's see if my buddy Nate has good shop etiquette. Well, from what I can tell, he's done a good job. Swept the floor. Hasn't messed with any of my stuff. It's actually so clean in here, I don't even know if my friend actually came and worked. But I think he did because well, he just left me a, he left me a little present up here. Isn't that sweet? There's a reason why I call you Nate Dog, because you are a dirty dog, Nate. Dirty, dirty, dirty. <laughs> oh, I gotta say, I had a good chuckle when I came into a big wooden cock hanging off my beam there. But hey, that's what friends are for. I would expect nothing less. Well, I could actually do without big wood penises hanging off my stuff, but you know, it's good for a laugh. I'm an axe junkie, or at least a wannabe axe junkie. And I bought this sexy little Japanese like camp axe off eBay. The handle is as, much, as nice as it is, it's got a crack running right down the middle of the handle and it's like this sharp little f flange of wood sticking out right where you grab it and it's just like, it's still functional but I gotta replace this handle so let's do a little axe restoration shall we? <laughs> Put it on your orbital sander if you want, or just do it by hand. You can the file and the sanding disc wheel here. This takes off all the rust. Does the majority of the work, and then this gives it a less, just more natural look.
So, as it turns out, I'm not very well versed on mounting an axe head, especially to a Japanese axe. I don't know if you can see it here, but when I pounded in this wedge here, I was thinking about doing two kerfs closer to the front and the back of the throat and wedging it out from each side, but I thought, ah, oh, I might weaken the head, so I tried to just go from the middle. Used a wood wedge and that thing broke off because it's just too much wood to try and spread that way. Um, so I used a metal wedge, which kind of did the trick, but there was still a bit of a gap here. And the wedge, when I forced it in, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little hairline crack starting to go down the handle, which is not good. So, yeah, you can see it better on that side. And then when I went and split some wood and chopped through a log, the head, because there was a tiny gap on the back here, the head kind of reefed forward because, you know, just the pressure from the way the blade wants to sit. So I'm just going to buck this thing off right here, shorten it a bit and reset this head. Use a double wedge closer to the each end going across the grain. And uh, hopefully that'll fix everything. So failure, it really is the best teacher. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a like. An interesting thing I've discovered while I was hanging the head on this is that I'm pretty sure this axe was designed to be a hewing axe because I cut my handle straight, and I don't know if you can see it, but if you eyeball down the axe there, the blade is off center so that it's cutting more on this one face right here. It's almost flush with this side of the handle skewed kind of like a hewing axe would be so the handles offset so your knuckles don't hit the log when you're hewing the side of the log so so this axe head was either intended to be a hewing axe or the Japanese guy that forged this thing was drinking a little too much sake night before work you know because when you look at the top of the axe head you can clearly see that the eye of the axe head is skewed and uh, it's not a not something a professional blacksmith would typically overlook when forging an axe because it's kind of like one of the most important things. So now I've got a cool little Japanese hewing hatchet. Make sure you check out my website and tool store where you can see a lot of the tools that I've used in this video for sale. And for those of you guys who are not aware of the Axe Junkie Facebook page, I post a link in the description below. So if you want to go and join that group because you just love axes so much, Feel free to follow that link and check it out. Some good axe porn, pretty much. It's just an axe porn Facebook page. Until next time, Samurai out. You know, Nate, the more I look at this big cock hanging here, I really, I really am starting to appreciate the artistic value. I really think it's time you head in a new direction with your career. It takes a special talent to get thousands and thousands of men to just stare at a wood penis on their computer screen. Some might not see it as art, but if they're honest with themselves, it's, it's, it's too hard to look away, really. I would suggest in future pieces, though, that you use a hardwood. It tends to stand up a little better over time. Also, your proportions seem to be a little bit off. It's, it's like, it seems like you got a little excited on the balls, you know, as they're a little bit oversized. And it seems like you ran out of board once you got to the head there because that head is, the head is lacking. I feel sorry for a guy with a head like that. Ooh. But I will give you extra points for the pubic hair and the veins. It really adds an element of realism. It's very surreal. It strikes a chord deep inside you, you know?